All right, guys. So today we're gonna start talking about polar coordinates. Um, so before we move on, let's we're gonna talk about a little bit about what you know already, which is your rectangular grid, which is typically an X Y. Okay. Uh, what I want you to know is that polar grids. If we're talking about a point on the Cartesian plane, which is when you have an, a horizontal and a vertical distance, it will be plot in the exact same spot on your polar go polar coordinate. Okay. So what I mean by that is, for example, if you take a look at, let's just come up with an actual point on the coordinate grid. So four two. So four two will be located here. That means that when you plot that point on a polar coordinate it's going to be somewhere along here on this quadrant okay now uh, I'm not gonna give you the answer just yet because we're gonna figure out how to find that here in just a second but I will tell you that it's located somewhere in here so let's just pretend that it's located here okay let's just say that it's located there and I don't know I just took a guess okay now the difference between the rectangular coordinates to the polar coordinates is that notice how you have a horizontal distance and a vertical distance well in this case look at this coordinate plane uh... you don't really have you have circles so uh... one of the things that should come up to your mind is the unit circle okay? so that means that this point is from the origin we're going to call this the origin on the polar is called a pole okay? so this is the origin you typically know it on the rectangular grid but here it's known as the pole Okay, so from here to here, uh, we're gonna call that distance r, and you're gonna take think unit circle. Remember how the unit circle you start at zero degrees and you go counterclockwise all the way to 360. So that means that this from here to here is some angle, and then from here to here is some distance. So you're actually gonna have some coordinates and the coordinates are actually r where it's the measure of the distance from the pole to your point and we're going to call that r and then your angle so it's r theta okay all right so here's what you're going to do typically your unit circle was divided into 0 pi over 6 pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, etc. Okay, so here's what you know. So this is 0, this is pi over 2. You know that right in between that's going to be pi over 4. Okay, alright. So notice how we divided this. Okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so from here to here is pi. So let's count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So pi is divided into 12 sections, so that should then give you the hint that this is pi over 12. This is 2 pi over 12, which can be reduced to pi over 6. This is 3 pi over 12, which can be reduced to pi over 4. Uh, this is 4 pi over 12, which can be reduced to pi over 3. This would be 5 pi over 12, so we're going to leave it as 5 pi over 12. 6 pi over 12, which is pi over 2. Uh, 7 pi over 12, 8 pi over 12, which can be reduced to 2 pi over 3, uh, 9, which can be reduced to 3 pi over 4, 10 pi over 12, which can be reduced to 5 pi over 6, 11 pi over 12, and then 12 pi over 12, which is pi, and then you can continue to fill out the rest. Okay. Now notice how you have the circles here. Each circle is considered one unit. So at this moment, if I was to talk about this point that I just randomly plot, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, pi over 6. Okay? Uh, I don't know that they are equal to each other because I just picked that point at random, but I will let you know how to convert one from the other here in just a second. So the first thing I want you to do is just to plot the following points. Okay? So let's talk about this. You have the point 4, pi over 4. So very simple. What I would do is first locate pi over 4. So pi over 4, you know that it's in between pi over 2 and 0. So this would be pi over 4. So here's your angle, and it's got to be somewhere in there. So starting from your pole, you got to go 4 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and this right here is 4 comma pi over 4 okay all right uh, I want you to try plotting the next points on your own I will have the answer key online so we're gonna go ahead and move on on the notes try this on your own all right which then leads us to the second part of the notes so it is converting from polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. All right, we're going to use the diagram on the right to find the expression for cosine and sine. Well, you might say, why would we need to do that? Okay, well, let's talk about this. We're going to have to think about back in um, trigonometry, so Sokotoa. You have some angle here, and then you have some point here, x, y. All right, so we're going to label this as y and we're going to label this as x, right? That's what you're used to. x is your horizontal distance and y is your vertical. So why would we do that? Well, if we know that this point right here is x distance and then y distance, so that makes it xy, this makes it rectangular, how can I turn this into a polar coordinate? Well, here you got, you got your r distance right here, okay? And then you have an angle here formed with the x-axis so wouldn't that give you your radius comma angle okay so that's kind of what, where I'm hitting at so let's talk about this alright so if I want to find the cosine of theta in this case cosine of theta is if you remember Sokotoa cosine is adjacent over radius so we're gonna say cosine of theta is x over r which therefore sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse so it's y over r it says solve for x and y and on the above expression so if we solve for x this becomes x equals r cosine theta and if we solve for y this becomes y equals r sine of theta so we're going to write them down here r cosine theta r sine of theta Okay. Your next question might be, which I didn't include, then how am I going to find this r distance? What is r? Well, we have a right triangle, so you have to think back into Pythagorean theorem. And to find the hypotenuse is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except that this time we actually know we have variables. So we're going to say that x squared plus y squared equals 2r squared. Okay. This three you must memorize for your quiz. And I use them, so let's see, we got a couple examples here. It says we're going to convert the following from polar to rectangular coordinates. So for this one you have your r equals to 4 and you have your theta equals to pi over 3. Alright, so how can I find my x value? Oh, well that's very simple. x equals to r times the cosine of theta. Well r is 4 and that's going to be times the cosine of pi over 3. So let's talk about this. Uh, 4 times what is the cosine of pi over 3? You cannot forget your unit circle. Pi over 3, that's on the first quadrant, and the cosine of pi over 3 would be 1 half. So 4 times 1 half is 2. So that means that your x is 2, so I'm going to write it as 2 comma. Uh, let's figure out what y would be. y equals 4 times the sine of pi over 3, which is 4 times square root of 3 over 2, which becomes then uh, 2 root 3. So that means it's 2 root 3. So we went from polar to rectangular. That would be the exact same point. Okay? Uh, I want you to try B on your own. Again, the answer key will be online, so please check that out. Uh, pause the video as needed. Okay? You can also convert from rectangular to polar. Okay? So that's when this equation right here that we derived on the side is really going to help us. Okay? All right. The first thing I'm going to do is find out what r is, okay? So if you have 0, 3, you have that x is 0, y equals 3. And we're going to use x squared plus y squared equals 2r squared. So x squared, that's 0 squared, which is 0, plus y squared, well, 3 squared is 9, equals 2r squared. Which means that r equals to the square root of 9, which is 3. So now we know that r is 3, so we're going to say that it's 3, comma. Now, how are we going to figure out what this angle is? All right, so we got to use uh, one of the following, which is if you have this triangle, so I'm going to kind of draw a diagram. Here's theta. 
you know that the x distance and for this it doesn't make any sense but it's zero and vertical is three so if you want to find that angle what would you do? Think trigonometry. So we're actually going to learn some new one. Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. You need to learn that as well. So that means that tangent of theta equals 3 over 0, which is undefined. Okay? So that means that for this one, 0 0.03, uh, let's talk about this, hold on, let me think about this, what did I do, 0 0.03, wait a second, I drew this totally, totally wrong, okay, give me just a second, that means my triangle is wrong, okay, 0 0.03, it's just a line, okay, so let's talk about this. If it's 0, 3, okay, wouldn't that just be that the angle is pi over 2? Okay, so that makes sense. Where is tangent un undefined? That's where pi over 2. So 3 comma pi over 2. Okay, that was a little confusing, so let's try another one. Okay, so 2, negative 2. So we're going to say 2 square plus negative 2 square equals 2r square. That's 4 plus 4 equals to r square. That's 8 equals to r square, which means that r equals to the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So we're going to say 2 root 2 comma tangent theta of y over x, negative 2 over 2, so tangent theta equals negative 1. All right, so then you need to ask yourself, you need to use the inverse. What angle on the unit circle has a tangent of negative 1? And think about this, okay? The location of this point is quadrant 4. So that should help you come up with this angle. Okay, so where is y and x exactly the same? Well, y and x is exactly the same at pi over 4. We use that as a reference angle. So if it's pi over 4 on quadrant 1, so here's my quadrant, so it's pi over 4, this is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and when you put it on top of the other, you're going to get 1, right? So because this is quadrant 4, its equivalent would be this angle right here. So that's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5, 4 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4, which means that theta is 7 pi over 4, and that would be your coordinates, okay? Uh, try C on your own. I'll have the answer key online, so please make sure to check that. Pause the video as needed. Okay, don't forget. <coughs> Alright, when we're going to transform an actual equation, so we have an equation here, R equals 6 cosine theta from polar to rectangular form. You're going to have to get a little creative. So first of all, what I want you to do is I want you to go on your calculators and go to mode and change your mode to polar uh... which is right here, hit enter and when you go to y equals it's going to say r1, r2, r3, r4, etc. equals to something so I want you to hit that, uh, actually plug in the function so 6 cosine of theta and I want you to hit graph uh... you might need to manipulate your window for example what I did is I did zoom I'm just going to do the standard which is 6 kind of looks like an ellipse but I'm not too sure, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit zoom, and I'm going to hit trig, and now you can see that it's a circle, okay? It's a circle whose, let's kind of play around with it, so that's 0 to 6, whose radius is 3, and whose center is at 3, 0 approximately, okay? So you should, that should give you an idea of what the equation should be rectangularly, okay? Uh, but how can you do this algebraically? Okay, so let's talk about this. All right, so you previously learned, and you're going to have to remember this, that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. You learn that x equals to r cosine of theta, and you learn that y equals to r sine of theta. These are going to be still very essential for us, except we're going to manipulate them a little bit to help our cost. For example, we're going to say that r equals to the square root of x squared plus y squared. 
we are going to say that x over r equals to cosine of theta and we are going to say that y over r equals sine of theta. Well, how is that going to help us? Well, here's what we're going to do. Here we have our equation r equals 6 cosine of theta. You are going to manipulate each side and substitute it for its equivalent of this. For example, instead of writing r, now you're going to write square root of x squared plus y squared equals. Well, we're going to leave the 6 alone, but instead of writing cosine, we are going to write x over r. All right, so notice how we're going from polar to rectangular. So in order to achieve that, that means that I only need everything to be in terms of x and y. So I've achieved that in this side, this side. So you have to continue to substitute in until you have completely gotten rid of r's and thetas. So in this case, uh, we need to get take care of that r. So here's what I'm going to do. On my left-hand side, I'm going to leave this alone. x plus y squared equals to 6 times x, but instead of r, I'm going to say square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay? All right, so how is this going to help us? All right, so let's do, let's see this. We're going to have square root of x squared plus y squared equals to 6x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. If I multiply both sides by the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay, that's going to cancel, so I'm going to multiply times the square root of x squared plus y squared, and I'm going to do the same thing here to x squared plus y squared, the square root of. So those are going to cancel out, and on this side, that's the same thing as saying x squared plus y squared, I mean the square root of x squared plus y squared squared, which is going to get rid of that, which then simplifies to simply be x squared plus y squared equals to 6x. We're not done yet. Okay, so what can we do here? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring that 6 over. So this becomes x squared minus 6x plus y squared equals to 0. Um, this should start to look familiar. We went over conics, and you had an idea that this was a circle. So I need that equation of the circle. Uh, notice how I have two x terms, but I don't have a constant. So guess what? You're going to have to complete the square. Okay. So I know I'm running out of space, but that would mean that I have x squared minus 6 plus blank plus y squared equals blank. Okay. Sorry, I'm running out of there. So remember, it's b divided by 2, so negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and then 3 squared is 9, so I will put a 9 there and a 9 there. So then this becomes x minus 3 squared plus y squared equals to 9. And I assure you that if you were to check that against the graph that you had there, that means that you have a circle whose center is at 3, 0, 3, 0, and whose radius is 3, 3, and 3. And voila, okay? This is very important. You need to memorize this, okay? It's the same that you were using for manipulation of uh, uh, between polar and rectangular coordinates, except that we kind of played around with them to help us figure out the equations for this one, okay? All right. For the next one, let's kind of take a look at it. You have something rectangular, and you are going to solve it for it to be a polar. So in other words, r equals to something. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to go to the back of this page. So I'm going to just flip, it out, flip my paper. So that is 4xy equals to 1. Equals to 1. Okay. All right, and I gave you a hint. It says solve for r or r. Oh, sorry. Solve for r or r squared, r squared if possible. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, going from rectangular to polar is actually relatively simple. We're going to use the same information that we know that, which is r squared equals to x squared plus y squared. X equals to r cosine theta. Y equals to r sine theta. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to substitute in. So this becomes 4 times x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta equals to 1. Okay. All right, so then we're going to try to solve for r, or r squared. Okay. So this technically becomes 4, and then r is r squared, and then that becomes cosine theta sine theta equals to 1. All right. So I'm going to, to I'm going to divide both sides by 4 cosine theta sine theta. 
So that becomes r squared equals to 1 over 4 cosine theta sine theta. And if you want to go a step further, r equals to the square root of 1 over 4 cosine theta sine theta. Okay? All right. Wait a second. Isn't there a trigonometric function that says that 1 over cosine, I mean identity, that says that 1 over cosine theta is something else and 1 over sine theta is something else? Hmm. Well, isn't 1 over cosine secant theta and 1 over sine cosecant theta? So could we rewrite this as simply r equals to the square root of 1 fourth secant theta cosecant theta? And let's graph it. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Uh, we're going to go y square root of. Uh, one fourth. So I'm just gonna put point point two five. Why not? Uh, secant. And remember that to put secant, it is one over cosine. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna use uh, use fractions here just to help us out. Let me get rid of this glare real quick. <coughs> Change my calculators because uh, the other one didn't have the update. But here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, we're gonna say square root of. I'm actually going to leave it as a fraction like we did before, so it's going to be 1, oh, delete alpha y equals enter, 1 over 4 cosine theta, sine theta, sine theta, and I'm going to hit graph. And it's not looking like much. Let's look at the table. Let's see what's happening. So, oh, let me start at 0. So at zero we have we have an error every time we put a negative number in there, okay, and that makes sense. Look at the equation that we're dealing with. But then starting at one, I'm going at three, two, one, 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 and notice how it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it, it seems like it is approaching zero, but I don't think it's going to cross, which means we have an asymptote there, okay. So just to double check our work, if we were to solve the beginning equation, which was this one for y. That would be 4x e 4xy equals to 1, which means that y equals to 1 over 4x. If we were to grab that, so let me ch change the mode back to function, and I'm going to go into there. So there it is, 1 over 4x, and I hit graph. Oh, so look at that. It's very similar to what we got. Okay. All right, so that's all I got for you guys today. Homework for the night. It's page 681, and there's a whole bunch of problems for this. We will have a quiz. Uh, the quiz that we we're scheduled to have over parametric equation has been changed. Uh, it's not only going to be over parametric equations, it is going to be over uh, polar coordinates as well. So please make sure you study. Quiz will then be for you guys. Uh, a day would be on Wednesday. Uh, B day will be on Thursday. Check the website, the answer key for homework, and notes will be up there. Okay, see you next time.